welcome back to the channel. Um, don't mind my missing frame right here. But to wrap up 2021, hopefully if this video is done and published by then, I wanted to wrap up this year by talking about the top 10 investments for photography. There's a little bleed over with photography and videography, of course, but there is no particular order to this list of top 10. They all contribute differently to my photography career. So I feel like it would have been unfair if I were to rank them. But these are 10 things that make a very, very impactful contribution to the business of photography. Last premise, I'm not gonna dive too deep into each one, but if you're interested in having a full comprehensive review of whatever's on this list, which is also provided in the link down below, in the links down below, then please let me know in the comments. Okay, starting off with number 10. This one is definitely bleeding over to the videography side, but filming on this particular tripod, the Peak Design tripod number 10. So. I was very, very reluctant about getting this tripod because of the price, flat out. I love everything Peak Design. I'm a huge, huge fan of all their products, but when this price tag came out for the tripod, it's steep, like $350 for a stick, essentially, to hold your camera. But I will say that it has easily, easily pulled this weight. I've never used a tripod as frequently as I have now filming videos and also when I do like family photo shoots for my own family, I can always just stick it on a tripod and it's just so easy. I love the form factor because it's so slim. The profile is just amazing. It's sleek. It's so easy to use and it's very, very convenient. Even with the tripod ball head that it comes with, allowing for me to film vertically, to take pictures vertically as well. It's just been an amazing thing to have. So even with me being very, very reluctant on getting the Peak Design tripod, I'm very happy that I did anyway because I just ended up loving it so much more. This was my previous tripod and I never liked using it. It's just so bulky. I think it's because of this experience of having a very bad tripod to begin with. It made me not like tripods at all. But like investing in a good tripod actually really helps with your creativity because it's just so fast and slim and easy to film with and it's so convenient that it makes me want to create more. On top of that, when we can travel again, I am easily bringing this because it just fits into the side pocket of my backpack. That's how cool this tripod is. If you are hesitant about getting this tripod, that's fair because I 1000% was hesitant too, but definitely consider it at least a little more in 2022 because I think it's definitely worth the investment. And I'm actually using it to film right now and I use it pretty much almost every single day. So there's that. Number 10, the Peak Design tripod. Now moving on to number nine, which is this harness. Oh my God, I love this harness. This is a game changer because when I was out in the field before I had a harness, you know what I did? I had my backpack strapped just like this and then if I needed my second camera, I would just open up this flap and of course, it's not very convenient for you to be shooting like this. So that was the process that I had before I even had a harness which was just turtling this on my stomach or if not, I just put my camera on the ground which obviously kills me inside because I don't want dirt and all that nasty stuff on my camera either. But that's why I invested in a harness from Holdfast. Number nine is the Holdfast harness. I love this thing. It has completely changed the way I shoot overall because this is the dual harness strap. So I have two cameras that I can attach to this. It is so easy to take out. If you ever need to unlock your camera from the strap, so right now my camera has a little hook right here. And in turn, that hook is attached to the harness hook. All you have to do is pull this strap and then this comes off and there you go, your camera is free to go. Just in case you need to unlock it, you need to get, you need to put this back in the car, whatever you need to do with it. On top of that, it also has a safety feature so you can take this hook and attach it to your camera because they also give you a little ring to put to your camera as well. And so just in case this fails, you have this as a backup measure as well. You can adjust it, there are a ton of different sizes. It's extremely comfortable. I'm not even gonna lie, I feel very cool wearing one too because I feel like I'm just like armed ready to take some pictures with either side, two cameras. Now the one I got specifically is, uh, I think something that they just started brand new. Holdfast had this option for custom colors and everything. So I got like the regular size along with everything black. Eventually I would love to have like three or four more. I'd love to have like the brown one. I also saw they had a Death Trooper one, which actually the from looking at the photos is a little bit confusing. I don't know what about it makes the Death Trooper. I don't know if it's just the colors or like the stamping and stuff, but either way, I thought the photo that they had for it was very, very cool. I'd love to have that. I'd love to have a brown one 
And yeah, they have a ton of different options. There are also vegan options as well because these are made out of leather. So with that, this has been a major game changer for the way I take photos because now I have two cameras strapped to me at all times. I can like talk with clients. I can, you know, greet people because I have free hands now. Also, you can adjust the strap from the link to here. The reason why that's important is because you don't want your camera to hit the ground. So that's why it's very important. And you can also adjust that as well. Even if you only have one camera, they have one camera options. This strap has been absolutely amazing. They even have three camera options. So if you don't have straps and you want to be more hands-free in the field, I highly, highly recommend the hold fast straps. So that is number nine, the hold fast straps. Okay, so aside from gear, I also wanna talk about apps or integrations or just different websites that have helped me progress my photography career. Starting with number eight now, we're at number eight. Number eight is Dubsado. So Dubsado is a client portal, essentially. It allows you to make contracts. It allows you to track your income, track a ton of different things and overall it provides a workflow the reason why that's important is because it allows you to do things much faster and i am a huge fan and advocate of things that help speed things up and is really good for organizing everything in photography so for example let's say you have a client you have a client lead you can track the lead you can track the entire process from when they contact you all the way till you deliver photos which is amazing it is especially helpful if you have a ton of different clients all at once, or even if you have just one client, I think it's amazing because you can understand the entire workflow from step zero to step 100, and you can track everything from beginning to the end. You can track when they have contacted you, and then when you send out contracts, when you um, are ready to shoot. There's the calendar built in, there's an invoice reminder that you can just automate to as well. They have automatic email templates that you can put in and it looks so much more professional when you have that versus just sending out an email saying, hey, I'll meet you here on this day. In Dubsado, you can actually make formal contracts to send out to your clients and those also will look really, really nice in email template form. Overall, this program has a ton of different things that I have yet to explore as well. Uh, the next thing I wanna work on is definitely a client portal, which is really cool because they can log in and just see everything that they have related to the deliverables and the content that you provide as a photographer, videographer. And the second thing also is invoicing. You can also, like I said, you can automate the invoices. One of my other photographer friends uses Dubsado as well and she loves it and she knows how to do the invoicing things. So I definitely have to figure that out. But that is number eight for me. If you are looking to get into photography, if you are already a photographer, I highly, highly recommend using Dubsado because it's going to make your workflow and your life much, much easier. Moving on to number seven. Now, this entire list, by the way, is not sponsored by anyone or any company at all. So these are seriously just genuine thoughts and things that I absolutely love and that have really further progressed my photography career. Number seven is the Lynn and Jersa SLR Lounge. I cannot rave enough about how much value that I've gotten from Lynn and Jersa. I've also been learning from Pi <laughs> across all his YouTube videos. He's been an amazing indirect mentor and after all of his insight that I found on YouTube, I just had to look more into his courses and what they're providing at Lynn and Jersa. The SLR Lounge, let me tell you now, it has completely changed everything about my photography, seriously. From like every part of the process, from like my workflow, my mentality, the way I charge clients, the way I structure my pricing for both the product photography side, because I do have a second YouTube channel talking all about board games and everything, but the way I structure pricing for that channel, as well as for my people, my portrait clients too, since learning from the SLR Lounge. And there's just so much insight and so much value that I've gotten from that course. I feel like it's easily paid for itself within like a day, honestly. I've only gone through like 10% of the resources that they've had there. I've seen their forums, they've, they've been very active on their forums, answering different photographers' questions. I know they have just a just a bunch of resources and guides to pretty much anything that you can possibly ask about photography. They have it in SLR Lounge. If you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend just checking out the website, seeing what they have to offer. The way it's changed my pricing model, the way it's changed the way I approach clients and how I niche down both in the board game side and in the photography side, it has been a game changer and I have loved, loved SLR Lounge. Pi, I know you're probably not watching, but you've been an amazing help to me and my photography career all around. And I have absolutely loved SLR Lounge. So thank you so much for all your insight, both on YouTube and in SLR Lounge. So that is number seven, SLR Lounge. Definitely check that out. Moving on to number six, this lighting system. This is the Westcott FJ400. It is a off-camera flash. 
And just like when I talked about the Peak Design tripods, how I initially hated those things, it's because I've either had a bad experience with them or I don't know how to use them. But I think I've spent so much time with those things that I'm pretty sure I knew how to use them. It's just they really provided a bad experience, being that the old tripod and external flashes that I've used previously. The FJ400, oh my God, the results that this flash provides is amazing. So far, I've only used it on two shoots, but let me tell you now that it is an absolute game changer. I've said that about a ton of things on this list already, but seriously, this flash has been amazing. Paired with the Manny Ortiz beauty dish, my God. Here's some samples from the lifestyle photo shoot that I've done. This flash, I cannot wait to take this flash out and do some creative portraits around the city, around a couple of fun locations around here when I get a chance. But other than that, this flash is never leaving my toolkit. It is going with me on every single lifestyle shoot that I have planned, especially for 2022. The battery lasts forever. The results are amazing. It's portable and you can also use it as a constant light if you want to as well. Only thing they have to complain about this is that the wireless trigger only takes USB charging. It would have been nice if there's battery too, because if you're on set and the battery runs out, then you have to charge it again using the wire only instead of using a battery. And the battery on that surprisingly doesn't last very long on the transmitter. The flash itself lasts forever. The transmitter doesn't. And that hasn't been too big of an issue, but it is probably the one gripe that I have about the FJ400. Okay, now we are halfway through the list now, moving on to number five. Number five is CloudSpot. Now CloudSpot is a gallery system. When I used to deliver photos back in the day, I used to just email them in a Dropbox and that was it. And let me tell you now that I've had so many clients rave about a gallery system because it's just so much easier to use. A Dropbox is just so simple. Yes, like you have the photos there, but the way people open it on different applications on their phones or like PC versus Mac, it's different and the experience is different. And when you are delivering photos to a client, you're ultimately delivering an experience. And that's what we do as photographers, right? But Dropbox doesn't look nice. And also you have to pay for the amount of stores that you have on Dropbox as well. For CloudSpot, there's just one set fee and I don't think it's that bad. I'll pop up the number here. I forget what it is, but that's how much it costs per month. And it's been an amazing experience overall. I've used it again for both the people side and the board game side as well. A ton of things on this list I use for both sides, but uh, the CloudSpot has just been an amazing experience overall. I just drag and drop photos there, leave it uploading, and then you can set up a gallery system. You can connect it to your store. There are different templates that you can use for the cover photo. You can set a password. You can set download access. You can set it to social media. There are a ton of things you can do with CloudSpot, but overall, if you haven't invested into any form, of a photo gallery system, you really need to because it really elevates the client experience and ultimately you want them to come back, right? And one way to do that, one way, <laughs> I always miss my finger when I hit it. One way to do that is to invest in a photo gallery system. You are delivering an experience, not only in the photos, but also in how you're presenting those photos. One way to do that is with CloudSpot. There are two things though that I think CloudSpot can improve on. One is that they really need a designated app for your phone. Right now, the app that they have is just pretty much a bookmarking of the website, which doesn't work as well. And secondly, the load up times I wish were way, way faster because I'll pop up the screen here. When you load up photos here, they take some time. Right now you're thinking, oh, it's only like a second or two for you to wait. But think about it. If you're going through hundreds and hundreds of photos, all those little seconds in between, they add up. So I wish the load times were faster and I wish they had a designated app. But other than that, I've loved CloudSpot ever since I started using it and I plan to continue using it as well. Okay, so I have two more website related ones and then we'll jump on to the gear, last pieces of gear for the last two. But the next one is Yelp Business. Now, surprisingly, I didn't even know that Yelp had an advertising feature. Initially, what I used to advertise my photography services was just Instagram. Yeah, so initially what I had first was Instagram as my primary way of advertising my photography services. I just used Instagram and that was pretty much it. But yeah, when you start out as a photographer, you don't really know how to advertise yourself. Initially, I thought if I just posted pictures on Instagram, maybe it'll catch on uh, in the local areas, but I think Yelp business has been, it's been a hit and miss. A reason why is because it's $150 a month to advertise there. That is like an ungodly amount of money. It is the most expensive platform by far that I've ever used for advertising. Let's say Yelp gives you five leads per week and out of those five leads, one books. Right now, my services range from 
450 to 750 for just like regular portrait sessions. So let's say out of that, Yelp takes 150. That's not too much per month. So if you look at it that way, the advertising isn't much for what Yelp gives you in return. But if you just think about it without all that, yeah, it's a lot. And I still think it's a lot even with all that incorporated into my mind. But to be fair, Yelp has definitely given me a good amount of leads. I forget what it's called, but they also offer things where like you can talk to different clients that are looking for photographers across the board. So that's pretty cool as well. But again, it's another ginormous chunk of change. If you are a starting photographer and you're looking for local leads and you kind of just want to get your feet wet, yes, there are other better options, but definitely at least consider Yelp business. Maybe try it out for like a month. I think they have like a free trial period anyway. So definitely try it out. See if you get some leads and see if it's beneficial to you. For me, it seems to be pretty beneficial for now. I kind of stopped it just to see how it'd be like with or without leads. But so if you are looking for local leads, definitely consider using Yelp business. Now, next one. Uh, speaking of different websites and how you generate leads, websites. We all know websites are important, especially as photographers. Instagram isn't going to be our portfolio, it's going to be our website. And I've used Squarespace for many years. To be honest with you, I haven't had the greatest time on Squarespace. There are just so many things I can list that have given me, given me stress and unnecessary problems on that platform. Won't go too much into it, but the main things are that the templates that Squarespace provides isn't always going to match what your vision is for making a website. It looks professional as a template, but when you start modifying it, it doesn't look like it tailors to your specific brand for photography, which is why I switched on over to show it and show it really does. Not only do you have way more flexibility in creating things like even like small things, just moving things around the website is just so, so difficult for Squarespace because they have like these boxes that you have to drag and drop to and you can't move it to spaces that you want to. But with show it, things like that aren't a problem. Yeah, show it isn't as beautiful to create on as Squarespace is and it doesn't look as user friendly, but the results, however, are I feel like 10 times better. What I did for show it was I got a template off of Etsy and then I just made my own tweaks and all that good stuff and added in all my own photos and different design ideas as well onto the platform. Yeah, there's a learning curve to it as well, but I feel like the results are just so customized and they feel very, very representative of me and my photography style, which is really important because from Squarespace, from using that for many, many years, I never felt like I was truly happy with my website, but with Show It, it feels fulfilling to have the website. Like I can look back at it and see like, wow, this is very, very me for both the board game side and the photography side. I'm sorry, when I say these things, then you know that it applies to the board game side as well. But yeah, here's a preview of two websites that I have. Check it out. I think they look really nice. They're very stylized. They look so professional compared to ones that I had on Squarespace. So there's that. On top of that, for the two, three years that I've had Squarespace, I've never had a client go back to me and say, I loved your website or I found you from your website. But instead, for show it, for having it for about a month initially, I had three or four clients go back to me and saying, wow, I loved your website or uh, we love what you did with this. Can you do this type of photos for us? Or we were looking for a photographer and we found your website and we really love your style. Can you, you know, do photos with us? I've had like three or four leads from that, from just having a website and I haven't promoted it at all. Maybe I posted it on Instagram once or twice. That was it. But I think it's been amazing. And yeah, there are a ton of different factors that go into it and how the website is designed and how people find you and all that good stuff. But just from like a preliminary review, I love show it and I just can't see myself without having a website like that. Okay, last two on this top 10 list of the best investments for photography. Number two is actually what's filming on this camera set right now, which is the 15 to 35 RF 2.8 lens. I did a full review on it if you wanna check it out there and I definitely wanna do more lens reviews too because I felt like I've had really good feedback about um, my lens reviews from this channel and from my Instagram. But I love this lens and the funny thing is I didn't actually go out and get it because I was looking for it specifically. Instead I was looking for the 28 to 70 but those were out of stock for ages. It's still out of stock now. And I just happened to get the 1535 because I needed something that was just quick and a wide angle lens and I can't believe how much of a game changer this lens has been for me. It has stayed on my camera, like with, with the camera harness. One side, I have the 85 uh, RF 1.2, and on the other side, it's this lens. It's been insanely, insanely versatile. I've used it for everything. Close-ups for product photography. You can do landscapes. You can vlog with it. You can 
take really nice, beautiful B-roll with it. You can get a ton of different ranges from it. It really doesn't perform like previous zoom lenses. Like the last zoom lenses in the EF line, I never felt like they were sharp enough or they provided enough contrast or bokeh enough to use instead of a prime lens. But now that, that completely changes going to the RF system. So I love this lens. I don't see it ever leave my toolkit. I of course would still love the, having the 2870, but that is next on my list. And with that, we're going to finish off this list with number one. Arguably, might even actually be the one that I ranked for sure in the number one spot, and that is the Canon R5. Number one best investment for photography. It has been amazing. The R5 has been so freaking amazing. I love this camera so much. Before this, I had the 1DX Mark II, and I love that camera as well. But the difference is, is that it was bulky, and I also paid way more for it too than I did for the R5, which is crazy because the R5, if you think about it, the features on that is like 10 times better than the 1DX. Yes, they were six years apart in manufacturing, but still, if you think about like the professional line of cameras, like that model system for cameras, the 1DX versus this, it's been insane. The R5 is literally my dream camera. It's compact, it's super small, super convenient, and portable to take around. It provides everything in amazing quality, like 45 megapixel photos. I cannot ever go back to anything less than that. And the video side, it can record in 4K 120. It can record in 4K, 8K arguably for a limited amount of time. But the only downside that I found for the R5, I would say two different things. One I found as of recent, and I feel like it kind of suffers a little bit in low light. Not to say that it can't push ISO too high or that it is bad in low light, but if you have bad lighting conditions, then you're gonna see grain in your photos. I don't know if it's because it's missing the backlit sensor like the Canon R3 does. I think that's where it is missing a little bit. Hopefully it has that in the R5S or C, whatever is coming out next here. I feel like that is one slight, slight problem. Maybe it's just me too. I may have to kind of experiment around a little bit more and see but I do see weirdly grainy photos when it comes to low light performance in the R5. I don't know if any of you experienced that as well, please let me know down in the comments. But that's the only thing on the photo side. The autofocus is absolutely insane. It's super tech sharp. I rarely ever miss a photo nowadays. That's all because of the autofocusing system on the Canon R5, it's not me, which I think I might be getting a little bit too spoiled for. But the other thing too is for video, and you can probably guess the problem already, is that it overheats. And I've only had my camera overheat maybe once or twice when I film it in terms of what I'm filming, which are tutorials like this. And sometimes I'll do commercial shoots on a lifestyle set. But on a lifestyle set, it's only overheated on me once, but luckily I have a second camera. So while this one is cooling down, I can use the other one. I don't think the overheating for me specifically is as big of an issue until at least it gets into like the wedding side. And I feel like that is going to present a major problem, especially if you are recording in 4K 120. Like many, many other creators and photographers have said, this camera was presented as a video centric camera, but in reality, it's like the best photography camera. So hopefully they fix the overheating issues in the R5S, R5C, whatever is next. And other than that, I have loved it. It's definitely number one, like my number one best photography investment has been the R5. I I don't see myself using anything else. But seriously though, the R5 has been the perfect fit for my photography needs, my videography needs, and I I want like two or three more. Hopefully, that way I can start training up some second shooters and start investing more into lifestyle photography. So with that said, I hope you all found this list insightful, helpful in some way or form. Please let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite photography investment, which one you, you are planning to look at, or which one that you might even consider buying. I'll leave links to everything, like I said, down below. If you have any questions about anything, let me know down in the comments. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful New Year's, or had a wonderful New Year's if this video is out past that. And I will see you all in 2022.